when I interviewed at the Panthers, like they asked me, they were like, you're like the great first grade director in the SEC. Like, like, why would you want to leave? And I literally like started crying on the interview because mm. I literally could not like, wow. I was just like, at such like a low wow. place that like, even when I got here I, on the interview, I literally told them, I was like, I didn't want to do any graphics. Like, and our designer left like halfway through the season and they had asked me like, and I literally was like, no. Creative people, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Creatives Are Essential podcast, where we have therapeutic conversations for the creative mind. I am Christina. It's your boy, Mark Lee. Des. And I'm Joe. Walk on, friends. And before we jump in, want to give a big shout out to our new partner. Yeah, come on. Musicbed.com. Music Woo. bed, baby. Yes. That sounds so official, guys. We, we made it. We did it. We made it. I just want to thank my grandma for you know, just encouraging me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait till after. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so if you haven't heard of musicbed.com, it's probably the dopest place to source music for whatever project that you're working on, whether that be a short film, podcast, um, even the music that you hear at the top of this podcast is provided by Musicbed. Um, in our line of work, you know, we do production and and all that good stuff. We've been using Musicbed for a very long time very now, so, and yes. they are probably the best that's out there. So, mm -hmm. good news for y'all. If you go to musicbed.com and you like what you hear, when you sign up for your annual subscription, you will get your first month free with our promo code, Creators Are Essential. Bingo, bango, bongo. That was y'all cue to repeat. I just like that you. Creators Are Essential. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so action, <clears throat> action. <clears throat> so, when you go to musicbed.com and sign up for your annual subscription, you will get your first month free using promo code creatives are essential. Creatives, creatives are, are essential. essential. Great job, guys. <laughs> Great job. Great job. So, yeah, definitely go check that out. Um, also, over, at, over here at Creatives Are Essential, um, you guys know by now we don't believe in situationships. Not at all. You know, we are uh, committed people. That's right. Put a title on it. Yeah. So, if you are here every time an episode drops, it's about time you just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's, it's time now. It's time. So that was me smashing the, the, the subscribe button. I pressed it. That what was, was that sound? That was more like a pop. That's how I hear it. Is it? Or is it? There was what? no power. I don't in that. think it's any of them. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> We'll fix it. You can, also get, <laughs> you can also get sound effects from uh, music. Right? <laughs> the yeah, correct one. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you subscribe, uh, like, comment, you know, give us some feedback, you know, and yeah. make sure you share with your squad, with your people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, uh, it's still Black History Month, guys. This is crazy. Come on. Episode 30. And because it is Black History Month, we have living, breathing mm. uh, Legend. black history in history. the making. In our well, right before presence, us, you know, the EGOT. guest of, what he got, yeah, <laughs> it, what you don't know what he got. I know what he got. Is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just speaking it into existence. Okay, okay, I like it. I like it. Um, she probably could jump into a whole new arena and kill it. She uh, could. Know? I mean, she does have like a very long list Listen. of titles and things that I don't uh, even know how we does. got her on the show. I, you this know, this is a miracle in its in itself. <laughs> I am just honored that she took time out of her busy schedule. Very uh, busy. I think from here us. she's going to Dubai to like do an interview with the president. Dubai? Yeah. I thought it was uh, 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 Africa. I thought she had to go to like. She South probably Africa. it's probably a dub, like a layover or well, something Dubai like that. Dubai is in Africa, ain't it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> Oh, we learned anyway, something new. Uh, <laughs> the guess. Google geography. <laughs> Pull out so Google. <laughs> okay, so um, our guest today, she is amazing. She is a graphic designer uh, first, which I appreciate. Graphic uh, designer squad, gang, gang. Um, she is or was creative director for multiple, multiple programs, uh, college football programs. She was the first, I believe, black creative director in, in the, the SEC. In the SEC. Yeah. Um, the first, well, a part of the first woman-led uh, design team in college football playoff history. Come on. Uh, current NFL team photographer mm. for the Carolina Panthers. So she said, screw that college money. We going to NFL money now. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And fun fact, she is actually the first woman guest that we've had on Creatives Our Central podcast. 
Oh, she is. Wait, that's another first. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're making history all around. Add that, you can add that to your resume. <laughs> right. That's, that's actually, actually the, the most important. Yeah, the most important <laughs> title here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will no longer uh, prolong it. The, the one and only Chanel Smith Walker. Why <sighs> <Are> we? <laughs> Thanks for having me, y'all. Oh, like we said, we're just honored to be in your virtual presence. Right yes, now. thank you so much. <laughs> we, are, we are just honored. Yeah, so before we, you know, jump into everything, we are going to do a little something, you know, to get to know you better, let our audience get to know who you are a little bit better, okay? <laughs> um, we're going to go through a little game called This or That. And okay. so I'm going to run these off, and you just, you know, you pick either this or that, all right? We just kind of let us know what the type of person you are, Okay. Oh, yeah, we are, we are judging you. So yes, there wisely. are right and wrong answers. To this, <laughs> just so you know. Okay. All right, you ready? Sure. Here we go. <laughs> the excitement. Candy or chocolate? That's the same. Uh, no, you ooh. have you have like hard candy, like you know, sweet, and then you have chocolate. Like, uh, I'll do chocolate. Okay, there mm. you go. Going out <laughs> or staying in? Ah, oh, staying in. I'm such a homebody now. <laughs> Captain America or Iron Man? Honestly, haven't seen any of those. Oh, wow. Well, that's a wrong no. answer. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I that was a layup. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I really like Marvel when I've seen them both. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen anything. Yeah. <laughs> living single or friends? Oh, living single. <laughs> uh, lotion or cocoa butter? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Nike or Adidas? Why well, Adidas on? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. It's like you wearing Adidas. You can't go. I'm about to say you can't go the other way. Usher or Trey songs? Usher. Okay. Honestly, I really put that one in there for Mark. I was hoping you were gonna say something. Mark loves Usher, so I was yeah. hoping it was gonna be. Yeah, man. He would have walked off. He is Usher, Trey songs. Right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Good morning or Grand Rising. Oh, oh, good morning. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I literally, if a guy texts me Grand Rising, I just like don't saw it. Thank you. <laughs> it's it's a wrap. Like, what is Grand Rising? Hey, like, what is that? Oh, Take you. notes. Thank Take you. notes, fellas. Uh, graphic designer, photography. Oh. Uh, That's tough. I feel like I have PTSD from graphic design, so I'm going to photography right now. All right. So, y'all say photography. <laughs> All right, last one. NFL or college? Oh, I have PTSD from college. <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah. That's all I got. That's all. I, so, good job. You did pretty good, I must say. I got to give it up for you. Um, speaking of the NFL, though. Yeah. Can we just talk about the halftime show before we get started? <laughs> I'm oh, surprised man. you weren't shooting it, honestly. Shooting the NFL? Yeah. The, the Super Bowl? Um, the Super Bowl. No, I was actually supposed to go, um, but I like ended up having to back out of that trip. So yeah, I could I didn't shoot it. So Superstar. Who else do you know? And be like, ah, I'm supposed to go to the Super Bowl, but I can't I had, make it. <laughs> you know, I, had, I, had, I, had, I just know the stage tonight. I had prior you know? engagements, you know. <laughs> Maybe next year. I'll, you know. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. But no, yeah. I, I, it's all good. We know. <laughs> what were your thoughts on the halftime show though? I thought it was amazing. Um, I thought they all looked so good. Um, at first, I will. I can't lie, but I was very confused about 50 Cent when he was upside down. Then <laughs> Everybody I was. was. Like, I was like, <laughs> but then I understood the reference, but Mary J. Blige looked so good. Her body was banging. I was like, oh, give me some vibes <laughs> like that, please. Like, uh, she looked so good. But yeah, that was amazing. You ever, you ever go to um, Boston Market and see the, uh, the chicken? <laughs> Oh, dumb. For her age, that's, though, no, I'm she saying, that's what 50 good. Cent reminded me oh. of. <laughs> the rotisserie oh. chicken. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. I didn't either. I thought he was like, we all took a deep Mary. Oh. <laughs> I got to leave Mary alone because there's some Mary lovers. I don't want them. Yeah, you don't, yeah. Want, you don't want that smoke. She looks good for she her age. She looks good. Yeah, she's probably like, really good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, though. I wasn't feeling it. No. I wasn't feeling the halftime show. Like, it was okay. Really? It was just basic to me. I like a performance. You know what I mean? Like there's like I'm I'm more of a fan of the Bruno Mars Beyonce yeah, uh Coldplay halftime show because it was like a show. Mm -hmm. This was just like we're gonna rap on this box and then we're gonna move over there and we're gonna rap on that box. Yeah. And then Mary's gonna <laughs> do her thing. 
<laughs> and it was just and yeah. catch the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <Yeah. Exactly. laughs> it fall out. I feel like Kendrick had the best had the best yes. part. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, but it, I feel like in general, though, the people that they have performed don't normally do these like outlandish performances anyway. I feel like besides like Kendrick, so I, I really wasn't expecting like a ton to be honest. Yeah, so. I mean the rappers to me like rappers yeah. don't really perform like they. Yeah, and then I mean they had older. Yeah. So like, how much can they really move? And there was they weren't moving at all. <laughs> 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 Go show. <laughs> Fifty looked like <laughs> Fifty looked like when he was hanging upside down. All his weight had just yeah. just <laughs> right gone yeah. to his neck. He looked like, so uncomfortable. But I'll give him props though because he literally like pulled himself up and like, which I thought was kind of actually like really like dope. So it's really like he's kind of strong because he actually like pulled himself up. And then went upside down. Yeah, I mean, that is a lot of weight to pull up. So. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of him to lift. You're right. Kudos, kudos 50. 75 cents. <laughs> oh, oh, see. oh, man. Yeah. But I, it was all right. To each their own, good. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, yep. hey, uh, we got a legend in the building. So let's, how about we jump okay. into this one right here? Okay. Yes. Uh, so actually, huh? So you I mean, living legend. She's she's fangirling right now. Living legend. <laughs> Listen, I'm honored to know you. So you actually started out with graphic design, right? That's what mm-hmm. you went to school for, right? Well, I went to school for um, communications. So oh, okay. uh, I got a minor in digital art, but it wasn't really like graphic design. We didn't really get like a graphic design like major to like my senior year, but it was like too late to switch. So my degree was in communications. Um, which is like, I did more like PR. So like writing, like SWOT analysis, like stuff like that. So, okay. As far as visual yeah. media goes, were you into that before you got into college? Like at what point did you yeah. know, like, Hey, this is something that I want to pursue. So I'd always been to art since I was like little. So my mom would take us to these like ceramic classes and we would like build mugs and stuff. when I was like little, um, and then when I was in middle school, I like would they would submit like my art in like these like random like design competitions. Um, and so then I got to high school, we had a graphic communications class and that's like kind of where like, I had a love for like architecture, but also like computers and like art. So that's why I was like, oh, graphic design kind of seems like a mix of both. Um, so that's where I like first learned like Illustrator. Um, and then we had this like class, well, this club called Skills USA which is pretty much, I don't know if you've heard of like DECA, but it's kind of like mm-hmm. in that same like category where um, we would compete like in design competitions like around Georgia. So I was like a super like <laughs> big like nerd, but also <laughs> I played sports as well. So it was like really weird. But yeah, so that's like where I kind of like developed my love of graphic design and photography uh, was in like high school in my graphic communications class in Skills USA. So yeah. That's what's up. What, 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 what college did you go to? I went to Elon University. It's in Burlington, North Carolina. Played volleyball there. Burlington, North Carolina. Elon. I feel like I've heard it before. Uh, is it is it Division One? Is mm-hmm. it is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait. So, where are you? Are you from Georgia or North North Carolina? I'm from Georgia, but everyone thinks I'm from North Carolina. But I'm from Georgia. <laughs> yeah. That's where you grew up. That well, I came on like when I first like saw like your page. Like you were working at NC State. And so mm-hmm. I think in my mind, that's, I guess it just, I don't know. I figured it was like a North Carolina thing, but um, yeah, I'm, I think I was just like the fact that I saw you there and it was like, I love football. <laughs> and so seeing it in this like super creative space was like, or in a creative way, like I, I think I, I don't know if I told you or if I, it was, I don't know who I said it to, but I was like, yo, like her pictures are like, it's like editorial, but sports. Like, cause I'm, yeah. I wasn't used to seeing that. Like, it was like this different type of look to sport. Yeah. So, like, I guess I was just like, I was curious, like, how does that work? Like, how did you even start to get into this college space with your, I guess, as a um, career? Well, I guess so. Right when I graduated, um, like, I had applied for when I tell you I applied for like ten different just like entry level like design jobs, like. Mm-hmm right out of college but like no like honestly no one was like giving me a, giving me a job offer to be honest um but looking back it kind of makes sense because the industry was like super white <laughs> so there was not pretty much anyone yeah. that like looked like me like in the industry 
Um, so I got my start at Southern Miss, which that's where I went to grad school at. So I was a GA for like our digital media department for athletics. Um, so that's like where I got my start to like in athletics. And then, um, I was a GA there for like probably like three months. And then the guy that was like our director of digital media, he ended up leaving. And so they ended up like offering me the job like in January. So that's like kind of where like my first full-time job happened. Um, and then honestly, like my career took off pretty much when baseball season started and our baseball, our baseball team at Southern Miss was really, really good. And my GA at the time, he was like, I was 20. Three, I think, but he was 34. He was like a lot like an older white dude. His name is Cole. He's at Tennessee now. Um, but his background was in illustration. And so I was like, well, I don't do illustration. So we just found a way to like merge our like our styles. And that's honestly where like both of our careers took off. And that, that's literally how I got like I got a DM from the creative director at Baylor. That's how I got to Baylor. And then got a DM from the DPP at NC State. Um, that's how I got to NC State. And then same with the national championship, same with uh, Tennessee. They all just came from like DMs on Twitter and just people like seeing my content. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so Twitter that's is super helpful. But that's literally how I got every job. I haven't applied wow. for one job. So that's what I, I didn't know you can slide great. jobs that's in the dope. DMs. Like I didn't <laughs> know that either. I thought that was for. Yeah. So, I have a question. Were you ever taking the creative route? Were you ever pressured by like friends or family to like take a different professional career path? Like. Well, Chanel, this is, you're going to do what? Like, you're going to take mm -hmm. pictures? Are you sure? <laughs> Does that pay well? You know, like, was there that pressure, pressure. to do something else? No, um, no, because my family knew how serious I was about it. I mean, I started in high school. So, like, even though, like, it's, like I said, it just started in high school. So, pretty much, like, I would literally be going to volleyball practice or I was like, I would like, for instance, we had a competition and, and we had like our award show for the graphic design competition. And I literally had a volleyball tournament like later that evening. So I literally competed in the competition in the morning and then drove straight to the volleyball tournament after. So I just think in high school, my parents knew that I was super serious about it. Um, and it's not like it affected like what, like me getting a scholarship, like me doing well in my sport. So my, my parents are honestly super supportive. And right when I got to Elon, like I had an internship every year. So like, even when I was playing, like during the season, I was interning like during the season, out of the season, um, at least one or two internships every, wow. like every year at Elon. So, yeah, um, I was super serious about like what I wanted to do. Like I knew, I knew I didn't want to play volleyball professionally. I just knew volleyball was going to get me my tuition paid for for free. So I didn't have debt. <laughs> so That's weird. Right. I was like, yeah. I'll just be good at both. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my parents didn't have to pay money for it. And there were two of us. So um, I have a twin sister, if you guys didn't know. So it, um, so honestly, that my parents are super supportive. Um, and looking back at it, I think they were so supportive because my sister didn't know what she wanted to do. Oh, so they were like, okay, fun. Chanel knows what she wants to do. <laughs> she's got to step up. Yeah, so she's good for now. Let's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we were just so different. Uh, so I knew what I wanted to do. So my parents were like, okay, Chanel knows what she wants to do. Let's focus on Danielle. So. Yeah, get her right. <laughs> so you were serving and, and taking pictures at the same time. I can't. <laughs> Something like that. Like that. What <laughs> position did you play in? Uh, so I was an outside hitter my like first three years, and then I tore my labor with my shoulder my junior year. So I changed the libero my senior year. Okay. So you, you say you tore it? Yeah. You tore your shoulder? Mm -hmm. I tore my leg from my my shoulder. Yowzers. <laughs> Sorry, it does sounds anything painful. that's with the word tear is like yeah. It's like, Gah. <laughs> <laughs> you owed so, up that. Is that your, your is that your shooting arm? Uh, yeah, it is my is it my shooting arm? Yeah, it's a shooting arm. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know, you rehabbed and it. Played a role. Enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she made a quite a turnaround. Yeah. Let's so, see. your first creative director role that was at Baylor or was that NC State? It was a, uh, technically it would have been at Southern Miss, but I mean, Southern Miss was like a small, it's like a smaller, like mid-major school. Yeah. So I would say my first like actual official title would have been at NC State. Okay. Tell us yeah. about so, that experience. Yeah. Like how did, how did you get into that? Um, what's been, what's been your favorite part about being a creative director? Um, honestly, my favorite part is being able to like get more people in door that look like me, to be honest. Um, I feel like when uh, you're in a space where there's not someone that looks like you, it kind of shuns people away. So mm -hmm. I, being in that role, open up doors for not just like other like minority creators, but even just like the black athletes that are into art. Um, when I was at NC State, when I was leaving, actually, like one of the moms of our one of our players DM'd me just saying, like, thank you so much for like 
showing my son that he could do both, that he could be an athlete, but also like be an artist. Cause I was helping him with like his clothing line. And one of our other players, he started this podcast with called law of athletes. And, and one of my mm-hmm. graphics, like inspired that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, Deontay. So another one was Tayshawn. So honestly, that's why I love it. Just like, you're just able to connect on a different level. And honestly, like to me, football is black culture. So being able to like tell those stories of like athletes, because at the end of the day, like there's only, but so much essentially a white person can tell from like a black athlete perspective. And I think the fact that I was also an athlete helps a lot. Um, but I think it also helps that I don't really give a shit about football. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't really care about football. Like, I feel like knowing football doesn't affect for me to make this like fire ass graphic or taking this like cool photo. Um, so I think that's why I feel like that's why my art and just my photos are just so intimate and like editorial because like I'm not shooting it from like a athletic background. I'm shooting it from just more of like yeah. a creative like, capturing the moment, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Well, dope. I was gonna say like I I saw that you, when you when you said uh, you you wanted to be able to put people on that look like you. Was that something that you always wanted to do, or like was there a moment where it was like you know what I need more people like me around me? Like when when did that hit for you? Um, I feel like it's always been like a thing. It, it kind of was like a build, a, like a process of, so like the first thing that kind of put me on game was when I was at Baylor, um, when I noticed that like there weren't any like minorities in the creative niche. Like I, I, when I tell you, I literally had not worked with a black creative till I hired someone at, and when I hired Corey at, um, when I had Corey at Tennessee, That's that was like the first time. So when I got to Baylor, I noticed that there was just a disconnect with just like design for just when it comes to just like how you color grade or how like you, how, how black people look in, in graphics. Mm. And there was an issue that came bef- before I got there where one of our volleyball players, parents complained about how their daughter looked really dark on the schedule poster. Mm. Um, and it was before I got there. And that was been one of my complaints when I was at, when I played in college, I was like, Why do I don't look that dark. Like yeah. my, like, wow. it was just like, it just like either I, I looked really dark or I looked like I was like light skinned as hell. Um, <laughs> And so I noticed that a lot of just, I noticed a lot of white people aren't really cognizant of like how black people look. And like, I feel like right. you have to like black people a di- differently anyway, in general, yeah. um, just how you're editing and stuff like that. And so that's kind of where I noticed that like, okay, there's this disconnect with just like black creators and just like, there's not that many in the industry. Um, and so when I got to NC State, I was like, okay, like I want to start putting more people on. Cause I was actually in a position to where I could actually bring in like black interns Um, but then also another thing that just opened my eyes is that when you're trying to diversify your staff, you have to also be open about diverse, like, uh, personalities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of just in general, like a lot of white people is if they they are trying to bring in black people, it's like black people that kind of like fit what they, Mm, what they want. And so I wanted to create that space where it's like, you could be like, I know a lot of black guys are kind of like timid, a little more reserved, like, or some are like outgoing like me. So I wanted to create a space where it's like, you can have all types of people. So if you even look at like my interns at NC State, we had like, like a black, we had like three black girls and it had like, like this like white guy that was like kind of timid, kind of quiet, but it all worked, kind of worked together. But like, if you look at other places, their whole interns kind of look the same. And it's because they recruit, whether it's diverse, they're recruiting the same type of people because they're, they're saying they want it to be diverse, but it's not really diverse. It's just diverse in their specific category, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. So I just wanted to create a space where anyone was welcome. And so that's kind of where I was like, I mean, I'm different. I'm not like the normal like graphic designer. I'm pretty outgoing. I'm pretty loud. I feel like a lot of creatives are more reserved. And so that's kind of where I wanted just to put a lot of different people on, not just black people, but just diverse personalities, people that don't necessarily are the most vocal or kind of come off as like awkward. So that's good. Do you feel like you got any pushback, like coming in with that mindset in like a predominantly white space? Right. Yeah with that mindset oh uh, not really uh not a no honestly surprisingly no i don't know honestly i don't know if they were just like scared of me <laughs> <laughs> like whatever you say I just don't me. <laughs> <There's two of> <laughs> you. <laughs> i don't honestly know because honestly think because like i'm like i'm a very assertive person so like and i'm like if I believe in something, like I'm going to stand 10 toes down, like no matter who's in the room. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why, like, I didn't get pushed back. I think like, and I think coach, coaches knew like not to try me, um, but if they, 
Like, honestly, I feel like that's what it is. Cause I feel like for, you have to realize when you're in college football, coaches know who they can try and who they can't yeah, try yeah, like yeah. 100%. And so like when I first got to NC state, like I'll be honest, like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, but I like, and so I had a few coaches that were like trying me and I had to have that direct conversation of look, like I'm not one of your little kids. Like, yes, I'm young, mm. but I'm not your, I'm not your daughter. Yeah, like you're yeah. going to respect you're my coworker, just like this coach is your coworker. Um, so I think once I set that ground where they knew, okay, Chanel knows what she's doing. She's going to stand, stand 10 toes down and what she believes in. And so they let me like do what I wanted to do. Um, and so I will say they definitely trusted my judgment um, a lot. So I honestly didn't get like a, a ton of pushback. I mean, there were certain things that I got pushback on just like when it comes to just how I felt about Black Lives Matter and just like stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole different story. Just navigating that whole space yeah. when you're having to run a whole social media and being a black woman alone. Right. <laughs> so yeah. It'd be sit itself, but pushback as a whole, like I, I didn't get any at all, surprisingly. So so you might have answered this, but just kind of taking it a deep or a, a, another level deeper. Why? Why not just go to work and just take pictures or just be over the social media? Like, why is it so important to create that space for other blacks or other women's or other people that that are just different um that's a i hate i hate that you're asking a serious question <laughs> <laughs> curse you uh, and your good questions <laughs> that's a really good question um why i just i just i don't know like that's i, I wish i i don't know that's just always been like something that like has been a, a passion of mine like just like putting Honestly, I feel like my personality is like, I always want to fight for people that don't know how to fight for themselves. Mm. And that's probably, that's definitely probably maybe a flaw at times. Um, and I've been like that literally since I was like in high school, like I was class president. So like, <laughs> but I feel like that's always been like something that I've like been into just like fighting for people that don't know how to fight for themselves. Um, and I feel like, I feel like just that's, I feel like that's a natural thing for black women in general is so like, we're always like the protective people that want to make people feel comfortable um, and honestly, I was just tired of the misrepresentation of how athletes were in, in media. It's like, it's either when they're pushing anytime, like, and it's gotten better, but I just noticed back in the, anytime there was like a black story, it was like this sob story. It was never like, it could yeah. literally be like an NFL draft and it's like, his mom was arrested three times. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, but then when like the dad, like, but then when the white kids on it, it's just like, he was a straight A student. And yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Black like, athlete right. has a fucking trauma story. <laughs> right. So yeah. I think that's part of the reason why, like, I was like, okay, we need to bring more black creators in a space where it's like, where people are actually going to shed light on the positives, yeah. like, in like, black people's lives. Because yeah. we are not all, like, we all have trauma. Like, everyone has trauma, but it's like, I feel like in the media, that's all that, like, they showed for black athletes. It was like so annoying. And I was just tired of, Black people looking just like look, looking dusty and ashy and dry. And, you know, <laughs> yes. like, what the hell? So, he was a poor man. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm just so yeah. I was gonna say, like, if you notice, like, I remember like when I was starting out, like in photography, like I would download presets and from this one and that one, and you see like the example on their webpage mm -hmm. and all this stuff, and you, I started realizing like. <laughs> This is set for white people. Yeah. Because when you hey, use those presets on like black skin, good. it'll be looking green. It's not looking yeah. Good. I'm like, no, I mean, I need some, <laughs> I need some black people to make some presets. Yeah. Like straight up. That's been hey. a struggle. Are, are we creating any presets that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're no? like the Spider Man. We're all pointing right. at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I guess. Uh, that's very interesting, though, for to say that, though. I, I never even thought about that because there's so many black people in sports. You know what I mean? Like, especially like, you know, the big ones are basketball and football. But you would think that they would get the tones right. That's crazy. Because there's so many of us. But right. I, yeah. I never came across my mind at all. It's crazy. It's the, it's the tones and even just like verbiage. Like I would see like these like white people use like 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 black slang and it's like you're not even using it like correctly. Right. You could tell, like you could tell there was not one black person in the room when you decided to tweet that. So it's like okay, we need to get more people like in the room. So it's just like so that's part of the reason why I just like motivated me to just like. And I'm just, I was just tired of like white people having everything to be honest. It's like, <laughs> like, like you're making money off of black athletes, but you have no black people in the room right, making the yeah, content. Right. So like, I'm just like, man, uh, like we're like, I'm just gonna, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're making money now. How do you, how do you feel about like the, the new like NIL laws and stuff like that in college sports? Uh, 
I honestly, I honestly, I love NIL to, me, to I, I loved it when I was at Tennessee. I had to do all the NIL presentations uh, to all of our recruits. I honestly thought it was great. It was like about time, like athletes start getting paid, um, to be honest. Like, oh, I wish it was there when I was at Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I say that like I would have um, had endorsements. I wouldn't have had one. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we definitely want to support that guy who's third string. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been able to sign up for Cash App and take the Right, exactly. Exactly. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, I think it's, I just honestly think it's great. And I think it allows like for athletes to take care of their families, like at a younger age, um, yeah. cause a lot of athletes, like that's literally their sport is their outlet. That's literally like, and it, it provides opportunity for kids that aren't going to probably go to the NFL. Like it's only like 1.2% of athletes that go to the NFL, but you could potentially make, like make a little mo- money in college, even if you're not going to the league to take care of your family. So, um, I, I loved it. I, I love NIL. Um, I'm just nervous that, it it's like people are take not using it correctly yeah. um and, there, and people are just putting out like this low budget like bs like they're coming up with these like tacky ass <laughs> logos and i'm like if you already took the time to come up with a strategy you could make so much more money <laughs> yeah but like you're just like putting bs out there so you're kind of making like 50 percent of the money that you should be making which is like really annoying but yeah yeah i'm glad they're <laughs> learning now yeah rather you know they're just yeah. getting an early start to it yeah. you know yeah um i do have a question for you though so you're at nc state right and 2020 uh-huh. rolls around, COVID happens, the season kind of stops, or yeah. or just football prep. I yeah. don't know where they it were just, in the season. Shifted, I don't watch college like, football. Majorly, yeah, yeah. How did you navigate that? And then also, um, once the season did start, you know, like you you touched on it a little bit, like um, representing as a black woman during you know, the second coming of the civil rights movement. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> um, <laughs> between COVID and that, how did you navigate that? Well, my hands, my mental health was at an all time low. Um, no, but COVID was so hard because, like, it's like funny because it was so annoying because everyone would be on social media like I'm just drinking wine all day, and I was like, I literally have been making recruiting graphics nonstop because like we couldn't do anything. We couldn't be recruits on campus. We couldn't like do photo shoots. So I was literally working all the time. Like it's like we're, like like we were doubling up on graphics for like both classes because because classes overlap like during that time. Um, it was like we're recruiting like the 19 class, but also the 20 class or 20, 2021. Um, so it was just like so many jersey swaps, so many like putting heads on bodies. Like I was just working nonstop that like, even when I was home in Georgia, like my mom had to be like, okay, like close your computer. Cause I was literally working like even on Saturday and Sundays, like I would be like in the car, like, and I was like making graphics or like making a change. Um, but I will say when like everything happened with George Floyd, that was like really hard for me because I've always been so passionate about just like Black Lives Matter in general. Um, and so it was one of those things where I had to have the conversation with like our head coach. Like uh, I had a great relationship with our players at NC State. So when a lot of it happened, when everything went down, we had a team meeting and it wasn't addressed like George Floyd. It was not addressed in a team mm. meeting. It was like George Floyd happened Wednesday. We had a team meeting Thursday and nothing was brought up about it. And I was like, I was so pissed. Um, And I had like three, four players call me after just like venting about it. So then I called our DB coach, our like um, our DFO and our head coach, which I had a great relationship with the staff there. And I like, I told him straight up, I was like, look, you didn't, did not handle that well at all. Like you're focused on putting on a statement, but you haven't even addressed the team before the statement. Uh-huh. Um, Cause I, I was literally making a statement graphic, but we had yet to even discuss it with the team. And so we brought it up um, in our second team meeting. And then we actually watched when we're finally back on campus, we actually watched that one movie. Uh, what's that movie? It, I can't remember what it was, but it was one movie they watched as a team. And we actually talked about like police brutality, like Black Lives Matter. It was a great conversation. It was like great because um, Coach Dorn, like he had to shift his mindset because I will say he's like a middle-aged white man. So he like couldn't really relate. He didn't understand like why as black people, we were just so angry. So to be able to have that conversation as like an open forum, I thought would be, I thought was great, but it was super hard to like run our social media because um, I had made that graphic with like our workout photos from our players. And it has like the like the handwritten font of like, don't shoot, like stuff like that. And we posted it on our social media. Um, our fans like were going crazy. And like they, a lot of them knew that I ran our social media. So I was getting like DMs, like threats, like oh. Oh. just like. Oh, in a bad way. Yeah, I thought oh, yeah. yeah I thought it was like, they were just like. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. 
they were going crazy. Um, and like people were, they were tagging me in the comments. Um, and so a lot of the players like stood up for me, which I was like, I, I texted the players, I was like, thank you so much. Cause they were like defending me in the comments. They were like, leave Chanel alone. Like we love Chanel. Like, like it was like, they had my back, which was great, but it was like trying so hard to like, and even the honesty players, like, cause I had a great relationship with a lot of the other sport teams. So like, even like the volleyball team, like the basketball team were like chiming out of the comments. Cause they were like going off, like just about what we were posting. Yeah. Um, Black Lives Matter and like the photos that I took of like our protests and stuff like that. Um, so it was hard. Like it was hard balancing all that, but um, I survived, but it was definitely like a, just a process to kind of just like handle all that. But it definitely gave me PTSD when I was going to announce that I was going to Tennessee. So, and that was a whole different, just like mental game. So, yeah. If, if, <laughs> if we could stay there for a little bit and it's not too personal, if it's not too personal, like what was that? Cause you talk about your mental health being at all time low. Um, what was that process or is that process still going on in terms of you coming back to a safe and healthy place? I think, um, honestly, like, I think it honestly just got back into a safe place because, so I was like in a really bad place when I left NT state. Um, but then when I moved to Tennessee, I like our SID at the time, um, had like asked me like, Hey, when are you going to announce it? Are you going to that you're coming to Tennessee? And I was nervous because Knoxville and Tennessee as a whole, like, were just super racist. And the guy before me was a white guy. And I knew that it was going to be a big deal because I had, like, literally just did this, uh, the Sports Illustrated article about in the USA Today article about it coming out that I was going to be the first Black creative director in the SEC. And I was literally had so much anxiety about it that I didn't even, like, really, like, announce it like that. I literally just, like, screenshot it <laughs> the, the, like, article, like, in the, of the newspaper. And I just, like put it in the caption, like going to Tennessee, like kept it like kind of subtle because I knew I was getting a backlash. And then when it got announced on social media, like I got ripped apart. Really? Like not only were they ripping me apart about being black, but also being a female, like everyone was like, what? um, about like one, a few guys made a comment about like, why don't we just have the guys run out in bras and like ripping wow. me apart about just like running their social media. What does that have to do with like, anything? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. And then they were a lot of were upset because I had made the comment in the Sports Illustrated article, which honestly didn't think it was bad because I feel like football is black culture, and I just said I can't wait to bring black culture to Tennessee football because Tennessee football at the time is just like, it was very whitewashed. It was like, it was bland, no personality. And I was excited to show like the black culture. So I made the comment and the fans were like, there were a lot of people were super supportive, but a lot of the fans were like ripping me like apart um, on social media. But I did it honestly, when I got to Tennessee, I was already at like a low. And then just with how Tennessee was and the amount of hours we were working, like I like literally hit rock bottom when I was like mm. having anxiety attacks. Like I was literally, there was like three times when I literally called my mom, like hysterically crying at like three in the morning. Cause I was literally, cause I literally was like exhausted. Like I was up at, and we had to be in the office by like 6 30 AM. I wasn't getting home till about midnight, 1 AM. Like I literally had like, I was like literally exhausted that I finally was like, I like literally can't do this anymore. Um, and then when I went to, uh, I had went to HR about it a few times when I finally met with our head coach and then another black woman. And that was head of HR. She basically essentially like questioned, told me to like, I should look back and think like, um, she asked me the first, it was my first time in college football. And I was like, have you looked at my resume? Right. <laughs> like, no, it's not. Do this. No, it's not. First of all, no, it's not my first time in college football. And then she questioned, she said, well, this is, um, it takes a strong person to be in this role. So maybe you're just not, suited for this role. And I was like, no one is, who this works yeah. at the Hold my beer. <laughs> right. And, honestly, and for it to be like another black woman, yeah. I was literally like, I, and my mom has been in HR for literally 15 years. So she was like fuming. And I was like, honestly, Ma, I was like, I just need to leave. Like, cause I literally will like get myself out of character. And I was like, I don't want to ruin my reputation. And that's like literally where this like Panther job literally fell into my lap. And like, when I interviewed at the Panthers, like, they asked me, they were like, you're like the great first grade director in the SEC. Like, like, why would you want to leave? And I literally like started crying on the interview. Cause I literally could not, like, wow. I was just like at such like a low wow. place that like, even when I got here I, on the interview, I literally told him, I was like, I didn't want to do any graphics. Like, 
And our designer left like halfway through the season and they had asked me like, and I literally was like, no, like I, cause I was like, so like mentally like checked out that like my first graphic that I made in like, since I left Tennessee to South Tennessee in July was when I made that Walter Payton man of the year. And the first time they asked me to do it, I like told him no. And then I like ended up doing it because it was just like a last minute thing. But like I hadn't made a graphic in like five months before that first one. Cause I was like, wow. just mentally like exhausted. Yes. Like, you know what's crazy? <laughs> like, I think like, yeah. some of my favorite creators are in this room. And I think, um, and you're one of my favorite creators too. Not just saying that cause you're here. Yeah, same. But like, we like, <laughs> I think over time, you know what I'm saying? Like being around Joe, Christina Des, like you eventually see some of the struggles. Like, oh, you got struggles too. You know what I mean? And I think, forgive me, um, but like, man, you like you you just look at somebody like you and like, man, this girl is just doing it all. Mm-hmm. She's forgetting, killing the game. Right. Yeah. Forgetting <laughs> that there's this whole reality human aspect. Yeah. To yeah. you know, like what it is that you do. Like somebody could be like, Man, this girl's just taking pictures, she's doing this, she's doing that, but there's real life struggles. This sounds like a movie, like yeah. <laughs> right. twenty forty three or something yeah. like that. There's gonna be a movie, you know what I mean? And it and it's crazy, but I think that's something we all need to continue to remember. Like, there's so much. Like they say, a picture tells it what? Worth a thousand words, what's the phrase? Yes, something, that's like that. that's something like that. Something like that. That's not right. Yes. But there's so much behind just taking that picture, like yeah. that moment in history. That's yeah. a lot, man. So how do you balance that? You know what I mean? Like with you and your, what's the word, notoriety? That's what I'm looking yeah. for. Mm-hmm. I think it's a whole different level than like, you know, I don't say someone... <laughs> Like Someone us. Else. Like us. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like the fact that that you got this position and then like people are on social media just coming for you. Like how do you balance that? Like how do you step away and like process everything? Like do you have a, I don't say a ritual, but like something that you do to like decompress? Um, I'm Honestly, I'm like literally just now learning to how to balance that. Uh, which I finally started putting my phone on do not disturb after like nine o'clock. Um, because, Amen. because not only just with like the work, but also like a lot of the mentoring that I do on the side, I like literally was just like recently, especially like I was just like burning myself out. Like as soon as I was get, yeah. getting home, I was like, either like I was talking to at least three, four people like a day. Cause like I was always getting DMS. Like, I just want to help people too. So like I had to set boundaries for myself on being like, okay, like I'm only going to take one person a day. And like once nine o'clock hits, like I'm kind of just like done with like work yeah. um, or just like, and so I'm, I'm, it's honestly still like a learning curve. Like I'm still learning that balance. Um, and sometimes you have those moments where it's like something happens in your life where it's like, okay, like Chanel, you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's like, I've had like these like recent like health issues like come up where I like kind of had to like take a step back and be like, okay, like you're doing a lot. Like you need to go back, focus on yourself. Like, and sometimes you have to have those moments. Like you would, and it sounds crazy, but you kind of have to have those scares where to be like, okay, you're doing too much. Like you're stressing yourself thin. Um, so I'm still working on it. Uh, I just recently started seeing this like life coach, like slash career coach where, um, she's been helping me out a lot with just like balancing, like, not just like my like job, but also just like my mentoring, my mentorship and like all the programs that I'm starting on the side, um, which that's like helped me out a lot, but honestly, just like literally like, to be honest, like do not disturb has like helped me out a ton. Like one time my sister called me like late in the day and I was like, and I was like, sorry, my phone was on do not disturb. She was like, what is going on with you? Like your phone's never on do not disturb. Cause I was always giving people access to me all the time. Yeah. Like, like, it's like literally like, I've even had to like some of like the people that I mentor, like they're like literally, I mean, one, there's like two or three people that I'm, they're literally sending me like seven, eight messages like a day, no, like no. blowing up my phone all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I've had to like, literally like, I've had to be okay with like setting those boundaries and being like, look, like I, I'm only taking people, talking to people during this time. Like I can't really do it. I mean, Cause I, I would take sometimes people during the day. So when I was leaving like a meeting and work, I would like talk to like someone that I'm mentoring and it's like, I, then I would head back to a meeting or I'll go out to a shoot. I was just like doing way too much. So I'm still like yeah. learning how to balance that, but uh just like setting those subtle, like those little boundaries and just like the subtle things that hey, when I come home at seven o'clock, I'm, I'm cooking dinner for myself. Like because yeah. I would yeah. I would get do so much work that I like wasn't eating. Like it was just like crazy yeah. stuff that I was like working so much. So it's like it sounds crazy, but just like a little stuff of just like eating. Um when I get up in the morning, like I literally either put on y'all's podcast or I like don't or I just like or I put on a uh, it's called on yourself podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
literally <laughs> those two podcasts I listen to like in the morning or in the, like I don't get on social media like when I'm getting ready in the morning um just like little stuff that I do throughout the day that kind of just helps me like get in my mindset um because I'll start like whether it's I'll like end up like I notice that like I'll look at like the negative comments or just mm. stuff like that so I'm just like it's subtle things I do throughout the day that kind of like help me get a balance so yeah, yeah. so Jeez. um quick question for for me personally um do you have any more spots open in your mentorship program <laughs> or balance? Do I, where do I, balance where do jokes. I need to apply? <laughs> you know, I can tell when you about to say something stupid. Yeah. I'm looking at you like, what you about to say out your mouth? He like, but hi, oh, I'm, laughing, hi, but I'm but serious. serious. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, we can talk later about so, that. But um, was Joe one of those people in your DMs? Like, Hey, sending you so, 10 messages your phone a day. Is on I'm you try, I'm try don't worry up. about what they're saying. Also, you're awesome. Please mentor me. <laughs> I'm trying to colorate these black people in. Uh, <laughs> right. You got three sets? <laughs> no, but I, but I am curious though. What was the uh, what was your trend? What was that transition like from leaving Tennessee to the NFL? Like, because you haven't you hadn't worked in the NFL before that or anything like mm-hmm. that. What's what was that like? Um, it was cool because it, it, it's just. The NFL is different, but it's also not. It's like very like everything's about money. So it's like, what can we? How much money can we make off of something? So even with like photos, it's like it's like, how, can we find a way to sponsor something? Um, can we? So that's why they did like a day in the life that they did with me. Like I did a day in the life with TD um, when I was teaching him like photography. So it's like everything's all about money. Um, but it's just also different than college because with college, it's like these like athletes are so excited to like, they just always want their picture taken. But when you're dealing with like NFL players, it's like, they do this all the time. They're yeah. not necessarily excited about it. Some of them can be assholes. Like honestly, you haven't really had that experience with like someone being a complete jerk. Um, but it's just, it's, it's different just the caliber of players, but um, I will say like our office is great because it's super collaborative. So you're in a space where you're just around creative people all the time. Um, and in college, I know like, thankfully at Tennessee, I did have a creative team, but I know a lot of teams that have that title of creative director, but it's like, they're the only person in the room. Um, so you're like, you're in a room with like a bunch of creative people and you're not having to do 20,000 different things. I was, I'm not having to run social media on top of manage our players and accounts on top of uploading photos on top right. of like designing graphics. I'm able to focus on like just doing photography, just focusing on like what, what's our sets going to look like for photo shoots, mm-hmm. um, whether it's free agency draft, things like that. Um, so I will say that the, the transition for me was, it was smooth, but it wasn't because I started the day before training camp. So I was like, literally like, Behind so I, I didn't have a chance to move or anything. So I literally just like packed a few clothes and like drove down to Charlotte and then straight from Charlotte went to Spartanburg. So my mom had to do my move. Like they, like I literally didn't see this apartment. Like they literally had to do it all while I was at oh, training wow. camp. So that was like the only thing that kind of sucked about the transition. Cause it was just like super fast. Um, but I've honestly enjoyed it so far. It's, it's, it's different, but I, I'm enjoying it. So, oh, go ahead. Oh. I was gonna ask, is it, is, it a, like- <laughs> is it a good change of pace? You think, like, like between the the flow of college football and the NFL? It's weird. It was, I was actually just talking to one of my friends about that earlier today because I thought that the off season would be like slower, but it's honestly not because so with our stadium, like we obviously own the stadium and we have a soccer team. So like I'm like so I'm helping with shooting soccer, um, and I have to shoot like all the concerts like in the stadium, any events in the stadium. Um, and like, I'm having to do stuff for like community service, like top cast. So it's not as like, it's not as slow as I thought it would be. Um, cause I definitely thought I was like, I'm going to be chilling these next like three months and like collecting a check, but it's yeah. like, nah. no. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> 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 Right. So it's not unexpected, but it's, it's definitely a good change of pace as in like, you're able to actually ideate and like strategize. Like you're like, I feel like in college it's very reactive, but I feel like with, with the NFL, it's like more pro, like proactive. We're able to like plan and like strategize. Like we've been working on our set for a free agency that starts in March, like since the beginning of like probably the end of January. So it's like, you're able to kind of plan and we're already starting to plan for like NFL draft and things like that. So that's the, that's the part that I, I do love because it's definitely more like, agency style we're able to plan ahead of time um unlike college is kind of just you're reacting to everything so take us back a little bit like what was that moment when you picked up your first camera like what camera was it and (laughs) what advice would you give to that person that you were knowing 
everything that you've gone through, like what would you tell that person that picked up the camera for that first time? Um, so my first camera was in high school, I think, college, high school, college, something like that. Um, and it was like a Nikon, like 5D. So, and I really <laughs> had no idea. I had no idea how to use a camera. Like it was literally just like watching YouTube. Like I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I'll say, I'll tell anyone First of all, practice makes perfect. I will say, like, I definitely feel like I look back on my photos from when I was in college and it's like, God, this was like literally terrible. <laughs> so like now, but um, I would tell myself, you're going to go through a lot of, shit, <laughs> uh, but don't let it break you. Cause I feel like even when I was at Southern Miss, I went through like a very traumatic situation. I was there where I almost completely left the creative industry, like as a whole, like, and you're going to go through situations where you're going to, you're going to fail or you're going to be put in an uncomfortable situation. Um, but don't let it break you and to continue to advocate for yourself, because at the end of the day, you're the, you're the only one that's going to really truly advocate for you and have your best interests at heart. And I think that's why I've made it so far in my career, because I had no problem sticking up for myself. Even if you thought, if, even if I was looked at as a or whatever, like I'm going to stick up for myself. Um, and the people that I truly feel are supportive of me, I'm going to advocate for them. So going with that you know we all know sports industries but i mean i can imagine sports media too is a predominantly male oriented industry um what yeah. what's been the struggles that you've had being a female in a male dominated in- industry um so it's been hard because for one like i a lot of them think i'm like younger than i am so a lot of them like a lot of the time when people see me they either think I'm like an intern or something like that. So they literally talk to me like I'm an idiot. Um, and so it's like almost like insulting at times. I'm like, I'm not an intern. Um, cause I'm pretty sure you don't ask that white man over there if he's an intern. Right. Um, so I think that's a part that's been a struggle, but also just like, you get hit on a lot, <laughs> uh, oh. by not only just like, just like when you're like, it's like your players, coaches, like even like, player like players parents like I've had a lot of dads mm-hmm. like just like you, you're I in a situation where that's why I say you're in a lot of like uncomfortable situations um uh I'm tired it's like reading a flash like so and so you're just you're in a lot of uncomfortable situations <laughs> I not to, like, really like it's not happening but no you're just let, you're just let us know we strap <laughs> yeah pull up hey Creators are essential. So, after that. Uh, so that's been like, that's been like, so when I was at Southern Miss, you're, this is probably the first time I ever really talked about it like publicly. Oh, uh, exclusive. When I was at Miss, Come on. Just, Tell us. It's just <laughs> <it. Right. laughs> So I had just, it's when I had got hired, I got hired full time in January. So it was my first like football season with Southern Miss. And I was really cool with like our GAs and like just coaches in general. Cause I was, I was a GA before I got hired full time, but our, one of the GAs, he was, like an older GA. So he was like 25, 26. Um, so it was my first road game ever, like ever being like a creative director and we were playing ULM and it was me and Whitley who she was, uh, she was my GA at the time we were traveling. We were going to get dinner cause we didn't eat with the team. So we were just going to a restaurant, but I was talking to one of the GAs. I was like, I'm really hungry. And he was like, Oh, I have some brownies. I was like, okay, cool. So we like ate a brownie we're like chilling and we're walking out of the room and we're like, and now he was like, you know, that was a weed brownie. And I was like, no, it wasn't. I was like, you would not let me eat a brownie without like telling me there's like, cause I don't like, I don't smoke or do any of that. So I was like, what? And I, and I was like, is it really? He's like, no, it is. And I was like, okay. I was, so in my head, I'm like, there's no way you would do some like shady shit like that. So, so we both ate it. So um, I was in that we were driving to, we had the rental car. We were, I drove it to, Buffalo Wild Wings. And I was sitting at the restaurant and I was like, I feel weird. Like, and then Willie's like, are you okay? She's like, you seem kind of off. And I was like, no, I feel like, I was like, I don't know. I just feel weird. And so eventually I just had like out of bikes and I was like, I was like, I was like, can you take me home? I was like, so I like something feels off. Like I was like, I don't know what's going on. So, and at that point, like, I like literally like at Southern Miss, like everyone loved me. Like I knew the AD, like our like president, they were all at the game. This was the first home game of the season. And so I knew the athletic trainers there. So I like called one of the athletic trainers and I was like, he, she was like driving back. Cause I was like, get a trainer on the phone. I was like, something's off. Like, I don't know what's going on. 
And I was like, my heart is like racing. I'm like shaking. Like, I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. And so the trainers are coming out and the, like, and I like couldn't feel anything in my like right arm, like my fi- side of my oh, face is going down. I was like, I don't know what's going on. And so she, so the trainers coming out, like, like the AD was out, like the president was all out there just like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know, like stuff is going on. And the, one of the, the guy that gave me the, the brownie was standing outside, but like, I like my, I was like so out of it. And I was like terrified, terrified that I like couldn't recall that I was like, that I had the brownie. So he's, she's like, did you eat anything? I was like, no, I don't know. Like we were going to eat, like, I don't know what's going on. And so they were thought I was like having a stroke. So they literally like rushed me to the hospital and um they're, they're like filling out all these forms like i'm literally like they're like rushing me to the back because they checked my heart rate and i like i was sitting there at rest like the lady's like slow your heart rate down i was like just sitting there but my heart rate was at like 125 like it was like oh, so man. fast but i was like just sitting there and so ladies so the lady is like i at this point i had like three doctors over me like i'm literally like in louisiana like by myself like the trains are literally like like we don't know what's going on and like the doctors are talking to me and they're literally like telling me they're like we're about to stop your heart. Like we're like, they're what? literally what? like, the yes, swear to God. They're literally like, and I'm literally like, I like couldn't process it. They're like, we're like, we're the, the they're like, they're like inject me all this stuff. Like we're about to stop your heart because we're scared you're gonna have a heart attack. Cause they thought I had a stroke. So they already took me to get a, like a CT scan. I'm like, we're scared. Like they're scared you're about to have a stroke, like a heart attack. Cause my heart rate was so fast, but I was at rest. So they were like, you're about to have, like you're about to have a heart attack. And I'm like, tw- I'm like 23. I'm like, like I had never had any health issues. I'm like, I don't know what is going on. And so next thing I know, like my, like my, my mom's on the phone, like she's crying. Like they're like, my parents are driving up from Georgia because like, they're like literally at this point, they're just like talking to doctors and trainers that like, they had no idea what was going on. Cause I never had like, I was a college athlete, like, never had any health issues. And like, I only been a year out of graduating and no issues. And so they're like, we're about to stop your heart. And next day I, know, I just like was like out. And then I woke up the next morning. So the doctor comes in and the doctor's like, are you sure you didn't like take any drugs? And I was like, no, it was like, I, I was like, I don't do drugs. I was like, you can ask like literally all my friends, like I'm out of all of my friends. I was like the only one that d- didn't do weed or like anything. Like I didn't do any of that. And lady was like, you had like a, like a lot, like she can't remember the amount she said, but she was like, you had weed and like other stimulants and drugs in your body. And I was like, what? And I was like, I was like, wait, what? And I was like, so like, I was like, hold on. So then the trainer, cause the trainer was in there when he said it. And the trainer knew me really well. I knew that I like, didn't do any of that stuff. Cause he knew what of my trainers at Elon. Um, and so he called, obviously he called the campus police, like, and called like our AD, like right away and reported it. Cause he was like, okay, something's not right. So I was like, the guy, I was like, well, one of the GAs gave me like a brownie. Like he said, there was like, there was stuff in it. I was like, but I thought he was like, but he didn't tell me, like he told me after I ate it, I was like, I didn't think anything was in it. And so, um, so I was in a hospital for four days. Like we were like on the phone with police, like all day. So when, and so I called him and I was like, can you just be honest? Like what was in the brownie? Like, like, so obviously something was in it. Like you just tell me what it is because like, I literally had done like CAT scans, CT scans because my heart rate was so high. They thought it had to damage to my brain and my heart. Oh my so I literally was in the hospital imagine? for four days with my family in Louisiana. So I finally get, get back to Southern Miss and, I met with campus security twice, like, no, three times. They like, we, me and Whitley both had to like write police reports down and it had finally came out. Like, like f- eventually everyone knew like what had happened. They were just like, he like drug Chanel, like coaches were getting involved because he had said that, like, cause he said before he, before we even confirmed what it was, he had said that he gave the brownies to the coaches. So now, the, uh, so now he kind of like got other coaches involved. So coaches got involved and like the police got involved and like people, like people were just like, some of the like, students were like, well, Chanel shouldn't have ate the brownie. If she knew that, like, if she couldn't have handled taking it, then she should have taken it. And I was like, I didn't know what I was taking. Like he just told me it was a brownie. Right. So he finally, like, so at first, like he called me and he was like, I would never do this to you. Like, like blowing up my phone, calling me. And then finally the, the police was like, we told him that he can have no contact with you. And he finally admitted that he did drug me without telling me, uh, which I'm laughing now, but it was like super traumatic. Cause I was like hysterically crying and like Lily was like about to leave like Southern Miss, like drop out of grad school. Um, but yeah, so he finally admitted that he did drug me and like a police report was filed and he was obviously fired from his job. And like, they asked me, did I want to file like illegal charges? But like, I probably should have, but like with like actual, like having him arrested because he technically could have gotten arrested because he technically transported drugs across state lines because he went from Mississippi to Louisiana and then gave them to me without, gave them to two people without us knowing. Um, but I was like, I don't want to ruin his life because he was a black guy. 
And he was so young. I was like, I, I don't know. I guess he just thought he was being funny. Um, oh but so then that's when it came with the issue. It was like, he's trying to take advantage of you. So you real nice. But yeah, so that was like, <laughs> so that was a, my first experience Mama. ever in college football where I literally was like about to just like quit. Mama Christina over here oh with her legs. Yeah, I'm she like, you like, real <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bury him under the jail. Under the jail. No, bro. Oh, oh nah, gosh. bro. Uh, gee whiz. How you gonna say yeah. you didn't do that? On like, purpose, I would never do that to you. Oh yeah, but they you got all did. This stuff in it. <laughs> you said it. I was like, "What?" I was like, "He." It was crazy because, like, it it was it was. I had never been in a situation like that, and so like for for one, I told like it, it brought up so many things because I totally get why like victims alone, whether it's from that or like don't come forward because like I had so many people just like thinking I was like lying or like that I knew I took yeah. it, but like just couldn't handle it. I was like. You think I want a hospital bill for four days? Like you think I like yeah. you think I would want to be in the hospital for four days because like to just like for for what? Like right. I would never like put someone in a situation like that. And then for for you to sit here and just like try to like shatter my name and then eventually like own it, being like, oh yeah, no, I did do it. Like so like it was like it was it was just a crazy experience. But like I like that was when I first realized, OK, like mental health was real because mm -hmm. like I literally like couldn't function. Like I was like so scared to go into work like because like you had people that like didn't believe you, you had people that did believe you. And it was like my first full time job ever, like only like four months in. And it was like to be in a situation because and in my head the whole time I was like, is all cost football like this? Mm, like I was like, yeah. it's like, am I yeah. gonna go through That's this? Scary. Again? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, like I was like literally like terrified. Like my mom, like I literally like had, was calling my mom like every day, just like a secret crying because like I like literally just like couldn't function. Um, so like when I, so that's why I like laugh when people like say like, oh my God, your life looks so great. Everything looks so peaches and cream. I'm like, oh my God, I'm still so <laughs> like amazing when like, I literally was like, was like going to leave. Like I so many times that I was like, is this even like worth it? Um, and part of me, what made me want to come back was like, I didn't want to give them the satisfaction of running me away from like something that I like love. Cause I worked so hard to get here. Um, and honestly, I think that's what provided me the motivation to just like keep going. Um, and just to advocate for myself, because I feel like a lot of people that would have been in that situation and experienced just even just like the people that didn't believe, even when he admitted that he did it, um, they would have ran from it. Cause I almost did. But if it wasn't for my mom, like I honestly wouldn't be where I'm at now because she helped me out so much, just like mentally between that situation, um, just being at Tennessee and dealing with that whole transition there, like. I wouldn't be here without her because she taught me off a cliff so many times. So let's celebrate mama real quick. Yeah. Real. Because <laughs> let's, let's celebrate you mama. that you made it. You're still here with us. I didn't even yeah. expect the story to be like, you know, like that's a whole that's, yeah. heavy. that's law and order SVU. <laughs> right. Seriously, that's it's a like, crime podcast. What are these feels like? Um never mind. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was them just that saying was, like that's that's true oh, crime. Yeah. That's what it is. True, true crime podcast. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, that's heavy. That is. Ooh. Being oh. a woman so in sports. sports. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding you to my prayer like, list tonight. Lord, oh, right. uh, <laughs> Chanel. Lord, just cover her. <laughs> so, so talk to us about um, networking. Twitter, like you had mentioned it earlier, like a lot of the jobs that you've had, have, or almost all the jobs that you've had, have come oh, from yeah. from Twitter. And let me tell y'all, this this one right here. She is the queen of networking. Y'all think I know people? I don't know nobody in comparison to this girl. Like, she come with a whole squad. Literally, like, on Creatives Are Essential Instagram, notifications could be going crazy. And I'm like, what's happening? I go over there. Oh, Chanel done shared something. That's what's happening. <laughs> Chanel, she shared something. Now everybody's fine. I'm like, I don't even know all these people in this college arena. Like, yeah. talk to us about that. Oh. Twitter. I, I'm trying to get back on Twitter since you you know, have been pushing like, yo, that's where, that's where the networking is. It go down. Um, I honestly think because I honestly, I think it's because it was like organic. Like, I feel like, I feel like with social media, a lot of people do it for like the clout. Like a lot of people like post stuff because they want a reaction or because they're trying to get the followers. I think for me, like, I honestly wasn't really trying, like I ended up getting like a really big following on both my platforms, but it wasn't because I was like actively trying. It was just like organic, whether it's like posting my work or literally just posting up what I believe in, whether it's like Black Lives Matter, like supporting women in sports, like advocating for other creatives. Um, I think that's what's helped me out a lot. Um, but honestly, just 
just posting my work is like, honestly, just how I was able to network. And honestly, just talking to people. Like when I tell you, like, I think because I'm just like, gen- I'm just genuine and authentic. Like, like how I am on social media is literally how I am in person. I feel like a lot of people are very different than who they are in person. They may seem like, I know a ton of people who are like super outgoing on Twitter, but then we see them in person, they're like mute. And it's like, who are you? Like, you're like two different people. <laughs> so uh, I think it helps that it's like, um, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, it's like, I will literally come up to you in person and act like you're like my best friend. And it's like, I've never met you a day in my life. Like, I feel like even with like, Christina, like I literally probably met you once, but I feel like I like call her and like talk to her. Like I like right. known her for like 10 years. Yeah, when you came down for the for um the national champion. No, it wasn't national champion. I think it was sure. the Orange Bowl. The Orange Bowl. I'm like, wait, this is the first time that we've met each other in person. Like that's yeah. crazy. I feel like I know yeah. you for so long. Exactly. And I feel like that happens a lot, which the people I meet, it's like it, it just like be like I feel like I've known you forever, but it's like because I just generally like I want to show people love, and it's like it's not like it's coming from a, it's really not coming from like a fake place because like and even just like it's a sounds it, and it sound may sound like an ego, but like I'm very like strict on who I like comment on when it comes. I feel like everyone like it could be a literally a piece of dog <laughs> graphic, and people are like fire dope, and I'm like. <laughs> like for me it's like i feel like for me it's like i like feel like i've built like credibility where like if i like really generally like comment on it's because i truly think it's like dope as hell because yeah. i feel like the creative industry has gotten so soft and i yeah. think that's where like, i feel like i feel like if people think if you're not commenting like dope or fire it's like you're like a negative person i feel like that's where I, again my following has come from because like i'll call them out in like two seconds and if you copy my shit, i'm gonna call it out too and people probably people might follow me because they love seeing me start a pot which i don't care but uh but yeah <laughs> <That's what laughs> you, you know what i miss i miss the uh karaoke was it tuesdays or wednesdays <laughs> karaoke thursday oh, oh thursday no, so- <laughs> you gotta bring those back somehow somewhere i know I used to be we, are, we honestly are. We talked about it today because uh, we're starting with this like new series on TikTok. But I, I do need to be carrying Thursdays back because that was a that was an event. That was fun. <laughs> that yeah, that was that was interesting to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you tuned in though. Well, so I, I did. Hitting, though. You really? Are. I did. It. I uh, did. So those are like the keys to networking, right? Like just for one, being authentic. I think. Yeah. Um, I think another thing too is like you have to network with the people that's in the space that you're trying to you know get into because i feel like a lot yeah. of people just don't like oh i just want to you know what just someone tell me i'm cool please right mm-hmm. right or or they want to like or they want to network with like the players like i've had i actually right. had someone lol i forget this dm because i just got a dm yesterday and then someone con- the, the message said um can you show me how to network with the players? Like I try to reach out to players so I could get these jobs. And I literally was like, do you know the players aren't hiring? Like I never right. like use the player. And also like a player loves free content. So they're going to tell you you're fired, even if it sucks. So it's like, so it's like, don't ever like look at a player for like credibility or just like for, to get a following or to network. It's like you, like you said, network with the people that are hiring or the people that are in the position that you want to be in. Um, Cause I've, I've never once put a player on, on my resume. Yeah. Right. So how should someone who is like a young creative, they're new to the space. How should they approach someone like you who is already like a vet in it? You know, like what kind of questions should they ask? How, how, what, what kind of DMS? How do, do they, you, how should they approach you? Yeah. Um, I, w- I would say approaching someone is just like, I, I think it's annoying. Well, it shouldn't be annoying because I guess all, all they know how to do it as, but sending like a list of questions, I think is like super aggressive because no one necessarily has the time to like type back a novel on Instagram and Twitter. Like, yeah, sorry so about I that. Would, <laughs> no, <you didn't. laughs> so I tell people all the time, I'm like, um, I'm like, when you hit up someone, just say, hey, I've like been following your work for a while. Like, would you mind if we hop on a call or like hop on a Zoom? Like, so I can just like ask you some questions. Like, I, to me, I think hopping on a phone call, putting whether it's a face, like with a name or a voice with a name, I think is way more important than just like shooting a DM. Um, Cause I just, and I, it's also like, I've had a lot of people message me and they like, don't necessarily know what, like what I've done. They just see I'm a team photographer and they're just like, I want to do what you do. How can I get there? And it's like, I, there's no like how to God, I can tell you how I got there, but everyone's journey is different. So I think approaching someone just like saying, I've been following you for a while. Is there a way we can hop on a call? Like just 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to take too much of your time. I think it's just like a great approach instead of just like, um, 
instead of just straight up asking for a job. Cause I've had so many people with this can I have a, are you, are you guys hiring or like, you guys have an internship and I literally like have no idea, like on your Instagram handle is I made graphics one, two, three. Like, I don't like I, in your Abby is a black <laughs> circle. Like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> so, I made graphics one, two, three. Uh, whatever that is, they right now they're like, oh. Uh, like, Let me change <laughs> that. Click, click. That's oh, so funny. <laughs> so I just, one thing I do appreciate about you is the fact that I feel like you're always just dropping knowledge. Yeah. Like, even to your point that you made earlier, I think this past week you were like posting different internships um, that were present. Like, why aren't you charging? Like, even for the 15 minute consultations or like the, hey, can we like get on a Zoom call? Like, like what's just what is it in you that just you're just offering? It's it's uh, it's funny because I, I my life coach actually asked me that she's like why don't you charge people and so for me I I feel like um I feel like that's where the disconnect is with like a lot of like black creatives a lot of time they can't necessarily afford the gear or like or uh, the exposure so that's why it's like I want to put people on that don't necessarily have access or that don't go to like don't go to the t- South Carolinas or the Texases where they like, they're kind of embedded into these like huge networks. Mm-hmm. Like I know like a bunch of people. So it's like, I'd rather put people on that look like me for free, like to help them out because, so that's why a lot of time it's like, I'm, I'm working with like, like creative, uh, like designers of, or photographers and videographers from like the small schools in Charlotte, like the HBCUs um, and stuff like that. Like I'm in the process even now creating a a creative minorities workshop within the Panthers where it's only 24 people and I'm broken it up. It's like four different learning labs where there's social media, graphic design, photography, and video. And part of it is like they apply for it, but it's only offered obviously to the minorities in the Sharp Charlotte area. But the thing about it is when you apply for it, like you don't have to worry about having a laptop or like camera gear, any of it, like TD is covering all the laptops. Like that I'm bringing in, like the Panthers are going to cover the camera gear that they're going to use for the days for this workshop. Um, And even and I'm also doing uh, like an externship with uh, schools, the small schools in Charlotte. So that's literally just for them. So I went through every school in Charlotte and Rock Hill, like that are close um, to our new facility in Fort Mill. And I literally found a contact from like each like school, whether it's like communications, art and design, like anything like that. And I'm literally emailing them this link directly. Like this is literally just for students. So they're able to come in and shadow us on like Topcast production day or like free agency days, like things like that. Because like, because I feel like that's where the disconnect is. It's like when you're not able to afford to go to these big schools, like these white, that these white kids are able to afford to, it's like they're able to, they're 10 steps ahead of us already, like in college, because you have like the like the living stones, the Shaws that don't necessarily have the big athletic programs or have the digital media programs that they're exposed to. So even starting in college, they're already like 10 steps behind. So I want to help bridge that gap. So there's not this big disconnect. So they're able to be put on a lot sooner than after college, because I, I just seen so many kids that have reached out to me. They're just like, I'm about to graduate. And it's like, they don't even have like a portfolio. They're sending me like their Instagram. They don't even have, like, they don't know how to properly like have their resume. So even in this workshop that I'm doing, I'm having an hour seminar where I'm literally just showing them if you're a designer, this is what you should include in your portfolio. Like if you're a videographer, here's how your reel should look, what should you include on your resume, how you should like approach, um, people when you're trying to network, because I just noticed that a lot of black people just really don't know. Um, so that's why like when they do message me, like I don't ignore it. I just like correct it, just say, hey, moving forward next time when you reach out to someone, you should probably do it this way. Because I just feel like at the end of the day, I don't just don't think, I personally don't think white people are gonna put them on. I've seen it firsthand where I've seen a lot of white people complain about other black people in the office, but they don't ever say it directly to them. I'm the one going back and say, hey, you might wanna work on these few things. Like there have been some complaints about it. Yeah. Let's fix this. Cause they just wanna see them crash and burn. They don't really address it. Yeah. So I wanna address it on the front end with black creatives first and just bridge that gap of just like, whether it's not being able to have gear or just a lack of experience, I wanna put them on. So that's, that's the main reason why I don't wanna charge. So maybe I should, but yeah. I just wanna help as many people as I can. Cause I feel like that's where, that's the only way it's gonna help is if you're, um, if you're just putting people that can't necessarily afford it on. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's if you dope. do decide to start charging, make sure you do it after I get into your mentorship <laughs> program. Um, you know, we'll, I'll send you a DM later about. You are, okay, you are to hop on the, on <laughs> so, the Zoom, on the Zoom call. Right? call for about a, so yeah. going back to the mentorship um, program, 
um, if someone is looking to join that, where do they go? Uh, well, a lot of them have just been like, D- I honestly, that's a great idea. Actually, I probably should actually make them a formal thing, but a lot of them have just been like DMing me okay. so on Instagram and Twitter, to be honest. Okay. Um, last thing, we don't want to take up all your time, but with every guest, uh, we try to do this little segment called Creative Confessions. So we just have a few questions that we want to ask you. First question being, um, what do you struggle with? What do you struggle with as a creative? I well, I feel like as a photographer, y'all, I really suck at like <laughs> setting my flash or like strobes are so hard for me to set up. I don't know why, <laughs> but I literally, I, I struggle. It takes me so long to like, not actually physically set up the lights, but actually like getting that lighting how I want it. Like, I feel like that's a struggle for me. And I feel like I should be good at that, but like, I'm literally, Literally like a self-taught photographer. So like a lot of stuff is like literally what I find on YouTube. So I really have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I'm just like figuring it out. But that's literally what I struggle with the most. Probably I feel like as a creative. Uh, so I'll be just like my settings with like when it comes to like shooting with strobes and stuff like that. That's so my biggest thing. I don't think so. I've seen any of your work with strobes. I Because it is. <laughs> <laughs> You'll it never is. see them. <laughs> Well, you'll see. You actually, you'll see them during free agency because we uh, like we built this really like cool set, um, which would probably be like my. Actually, I did strobes when I was at Tennessee, but that was for like recruiting photos, so those don't really count. But <laughs> that'll be like my first test, which I'm like, hopefully, it don't suck. But you know what? If it sucks, I'll rally back. So we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> free agency will be the test. <laughs> so another question: How do you combat creative block? Like, how do you deal with it? I try not to force it. I feel like when I sit down, I'm like forcing like a creative idea. I feel like that's where like, I like shut down even more. And so I honestly watch like a, like a bunch of music videos and like listen to like a lot of music. Um, but then I also just look at like traditional art. So like, whether it's going to like the art museum, like I just bought tickets to like go see Banksy cause he's like here and he's in Charlotte, oh, nice. um, like February 25th. So honestly just go back to just like the art that I fell in love with is just like Banksy, like graffiti type of style art. So I honestly just look at that and I honestly just look at like a bunch of like magazines to kind of get me like out of my rut. Um, Cause I feel like when you look at like other like graphic designers, like especially sports designers, you kind of like, you begin to like, look like, oh, I should have thought of this idea. Um, so I try not to look at that. I really just kind of take a step back from just like looking at my phone and really just like look at the art around me, whether it's like walking around the city, listening to music or whether it's actually like, pulling out my laptop and looking at music videos and stuff like that. It's kind of how I get out of my rut. So nice. What's your biggest fear as a creative? Oh, that's a good one. My biggest fear. I don't really have a, a fear to be honest. Like, because I just feel like nothing, like I feel like a fear like holds you back. So I try not to really have a fear. Um, like I don't, I don't, I'm going to say it's a fear. I would say it's more of like, it would be more of like a challenge, like whether it's like, missing a shot like for instance the iconic cam thing like I was like when he yeah. came out of the tunnel like that was like a panic moment because I knew I was like okay I can't screw this up like I have to get this shot so I don't necessarily say it was a fear it was just like okay like I just had to lock in but it's it, that sounds weird but I don't really necessarily have a fear because if I, I feel like a fear makes it seem like I'm like comparing myself to others because I'm not I'm kind of just doing my doing my thing and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. spoken like a true goat <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what, what are you scared of nothing, nothing. <laughs> I'm in my own lane. I'm yes. scared that I'm about to slap one of these balls. <laughs> and try me again. I'm scared of how good I can be. <laughs> All right, last question. What advice would you give to other creatives? Um, my first advice would be don't give in to the clout. Um, I think like a lot of like young creatives get caught up in like players reposting their stuff, even when it's ugly. Um, <laughs> which that is subjective. So you may not think it's ugly, but <laughs> <laughs> people are gonna listen to this podcast and be like i hate chanel <laughs> a lot Sorry, of archiving going on <laughs> right. Right. but i would say don't give in to the clout as in like always develop your craft like it, like, I, like there's never been a time where i've like looked back and been like i made it so i have to stop getting better like i'm i constantly want to get better so like i'm even now i'm still watching youtube videos on how to do stupid sh- strobe lights i don't know what the hell i'm doing <laughs> like it's like just like stuff like that stuff like that it's like always like work on developing your craft um but also be genuine and don't change who you are i feel like a lot of people like get into the creative industry and they kind of just they kind of like 
silence themselves or they kind of fall into just like this like melting pot of just like blending in with everybody else. Um, I feel like you stay true to who you are. Um, I feel like that's what's helped me out a lot with my career and just like, and what's made me just so different is I've like stayed truly, truly, oh, can't speak, truly stayed myself. Um, because like, for example, like the fact that like, I'm like adamant, people are like, are you just saying you don't like football? I'm like, I've literally said I like didn't like football since I first started. Like I don't <laughs> generally, sit, I don't even like sports. Like I don't generally don't watch sports like at all. So I'm like, um, but staying true to who you are is probably the biggest thing. Um, and just continue to advocate for yourself. Um, people are going to try you, especially as a woman and a, uh, like a black woman, people are going to try you. People are going to try to discredit you. Um, and you're going to get looked at as a or being aggressive, but like who gives a their labels like they're just haters at the end of the day um what they tell think them. about me hasn't affected my career so tell them like like a goat like a true goat <laughs> <laughs> they don't affect my career they, y'all they ain't, ain't on my chat <laughs> <For real. Right. laughs> okay last last right. last question you don't know anything about or you said that you don't care about football but you've been in the football industry for so long what have you like learned about the game of football now, especially at completing your first NFL season. I still don't know how many, how many people are on the field, but <laughs> how many is it? Eight? It's Nine? 11. I didn't know. Oh, well, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was right on that one. But I have learned that I know the difference in stance. It's not NC State. I didn't know the difference between the O-line stance and D-line stance. But I realized that when I made a graphic one day, they were like, that's D-line. And I was like, okay. So I know the difference in that. <laughs> um, I think the safety is when they're really far in the back of the field, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? Yes, yes, yes. I'm learning now. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so I learned that. Um, yeah, it's really... That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> the quarterback. Like, they stand like this, and they're far over right. there. Right. The yeah, I, like, I don't really... Like, I don't... Because my thing is, it's like, I get so confused because I was actually just asking one of these questions. I was like... But like sometimes he stands up there with a D line, but y'all say he's a linebacker, so you don't include him in the D line. But he literally stands right next to them, so I'm like, yeah. you're all the D line. But I'm like, but then sometimes the D line is like different than like a D end. But I'm like, we're they're literally all on the line. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like logical. I'm like, how does this not like? How does this not make sense to y'all? What I'm asking. Like, how does I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like in recent years, it's it's really kind of it's morphed into like a lot more stuff. And like you, you kind of have hybrid positions that could be considered a defensive end, but also kind of a linebacker. Linebacker. Yeah. Yes. So like, and I'm like, what is a nickel? Like, is a <laughs> like, like, like what Nick, is all these, like, a nickel is just, <laughs> it's just when you have an extra deep. So instead of having two DB or, or corners that come up and guard receive, you have three. <laughs> tune in. Numbers, right? just, <laughs> you can tune in after like, this episode. For, uh, yeah. Uh, it's football, just, football talk yeah, with Joe. Yeah, Nick, nickel is like a, a, a formation in a sense. Yeah, but, I'm gonna just yeah. stick with basketball because it's simple. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's it, five it, it has five. it has become more complicated. I will say that when it just if you're not paying attention to the game, like they call certain things different terms now. So it's like a a DN slash linebacker is known as a striker in some like like we're still trying to get the first term. Yeah, it's just it's a lot. Honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. but I should know a funny story because since we're talking about football really quick and her about to end. So like we had one of our like guys go into the Hall of Fame um, this past whatever date was. And so we we're so obviously the ceremony was in L.A. So it started at 6 a.m. So we were up really late here because we had to shoot stuff on the video board and post stuff on social. So, you know, in the ceremony, the uh, like the NFL honor saying they bring out everyone that was in the NFL. So um God, I hope no one from Panthers hears this because I'll probably be fired. I think so my boss actually heard this. But so Sam Mills was going to the Hall of Fame. So of course, I don't, honestly, I generally don't know anything about like former players. Like I really like had no, like really generally don't know much about anything with football. So, so I saw this lady go out when Sam Mills went on stage. So I was like, I literally was like, uh, I was like, where is Sam Mills? I was like, he didn't even have the nerve to show up to the Hall of Fame. I was like, we're doing all this stuff on social media for the Hall of Fame. And like my boss and my coworkers are looking at me like Chanel. And I was like, what? Like I was literally like, literally like ripping him apart. And they're like, Chanel, he's dead. That's where Keith County came from. And I was like, oh, I'm so <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, Sam Mills, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Keep happening. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and they were literally 
like cry a lot because they knew <laughs> I like literally like it was generally coming from a place of like I literally had no idea like oh, and I was like ouch. and they're like no we posted so many articles but I was like I know I just like it and retweet it I, don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I was like but it was so funny like they still like give me shit to this day because I was like oh, like I was no. going I was like I mean I was like he didn't even have the nerve to show up. <laughs> I was so mad I was going off oh. He's been dead for 20 years. <laughs> literally. Oh, it's like literally where he keeps pounding. Like he literally has a statue like out there. And I literally just oh, did not. Like I no. no idea. Like I it's, felt so She works at Sam Mills Stadium. Like it's right. <laughs> 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 had no clue. It was so bad. It was <laughs> bad. All right. <laughs> well, we gonna leave that right there, and we're we're done. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on. This has been great. Yes. Uh, for people who aren't following you, I don't know why they wouldn't be. Um, where can they connect with you on the uh, interwebs? Uh, my Twitter is Nell. So N E L L E Z underscore. Then my Instagram is reverse, so like underscore Nels and my TikTok is the same. So, oh, you on the TikTok too? Yeah, I, I had that one TikTok yeah. that went like viral, like it was crazy. Just I, a day, a random day. In life. I, I saved crazy. a few of your uh, your TikToks just to kind of like get a little inside scoop on the NFL tip. I saw like your one about the uh, like your camera gear, like wh- like, oh, how, yeah, like all yeah, the gear you crazy. carry with you. I thought it was pretty yeah. cool. See, but. I need to follow you for the information. I just go on for the foolery, pretty much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Not me trying to educate you. You think Christina's like, no. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm just like cracking up in my bed. That's that's the whole role of TikTok in my life. Um, but again, go follow Chanel if you're not following her. She is like, Super she, she is like the goat for real. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people just be saying oh. that, but like she oh. like to go for real. Like, it's not too many designers that I like look up to um, in our space. And like, you're definitely one of them. So, you know, I know you had to go to Dubai. Um, you yeah, know, she's got to get tomorrow. going. She's she got to hop on her, P, her PJ. Yeah. So <laughs> she got just, a private jet, right? Yeah. Is it waiting right now? Or you, yeah, it's waiting. Or are you doing the Zoom on no. the private jet? <laughs> her assistant is calling her. Oh, oh. So, so sorry. So sorry. Thank you so much, Chanel. Um, go follow her. You could also follow us at Creatives Are Essential on Instagram. Um, get you some merch at uh, creativesareessential.co. Um, and uh, thank you, man. Thank you, guys. And we'll catch you on the next one. My name is Christina. It's your boy, Mark Lee. Des. I'm Joe. Later, friends. Also, Chanel, uh, check your DMs. Oh, my so. God. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Later, y'all.